there are two kinds of ways that neuroscience may be transforming, one that's internal to the field, another that perhaps links to the rest of society. Um, so let's start with neuroscientists. Um, one thing that neuroscientists are very interested in right now is understanding how, um, how genetics and development can lead to the wiring of a brain. And one thing that's uh, become very big in the last few years is the idea that we may start having enough technology to be able to completely map out a circuit of a fairly advanced piece of tissue like part of our brains or part of the brain of a mouse. And technologies are being developed to basically give us the circuit diagram. So everyone's heard of the Human Genome Project in which you sequence the entire genome of, say, a human being. Um, there's something that is jokingly called the Human Brainome Project, which is to come up with something that uh, analogous in terms of mapping out the brains, both mapping out human brains both over long distances and also in detail. And I think that technology has the potential to be transformative to how neuroscientists think about the problems that they're working on. Um, now, there's another aspect of that question, which is how neuroscience is going to transform or interact with the rest of society. And there's two ways that that can happen. One way is, I think, the medical way, which we all are thinking about. Um, you asked me before about Alzheimer's disease. As we start beginning to understand the, the brain as a biological organ, we can start addressing neurological diseases like, um, like autism, schizophrenia, Parkinson's. And I think that's something where there are going to be huge advances. And then there's this other kind of thing that's not medical. And let's call it philosophical. The idea that our brains underlie a wide variety of human experiences. So for instance, Criminality, what does it mean to be criminally culpable? Economic behavior, what is it that causes an economic bubble? Why do bubbles form and why do they burst? Uh, what is it that makes us fall in love? What is it that makes us form friendships? Why do we declare war on people we've never met? And all of these things are aspects of human experience. And I guess what I'm claiming here is that as neuroscience advances, we're going to start understanding all of these things in terms of brain mechanisms and I think that all these things are old things that have been with us for, uh, from time immemorial, but I think that as neuroscience advances, they're all going to look a little bit different. If people are interested in the brain, I mean, at a very basic level, I think our book, Welcome to Your Brain, is something that's fairly introductory for people who have no knowledge at all. Um, I think that one thing that people can re read if they want to keep up with current discoveries that's always fun to read is the magazine Scientific American Mind. Um, I know that I'm always learning new things from that. It ranges from uh, discoveries that my uh, colleagues are making about, hey, say, how glial cells work or how neuroplasticity may work, to, um, to things that are very much concerns in everyday life, like uh, why is it that we are unable to imagine death? or why do we procrastinate? And I find that that magazine is a great resource for people at all levels, both introductory and also very expert. Mm -hmm.